but um, I don't know if you heard me. Skype. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, I can hear you on here. Oh, I forgot the other pro uh, closed captioning lady. I'm sure she can hear me. Sorry, I think we're good. Not very well. It sounds like you're far away. It's very quiet. How about now? Much better. Good. This is what it will be normally. I was just speaking to someone else. Okay. Thank you. And you can go ahead and mute yourself and just um, we'll get going right at 2 o'clock. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. you. Yes.
Check, check, mic check. Test, test, is it working? We're gonna get started in just a second. Just testing the microphone here really quick. All right, great. Well, my name is Margaret Slyke, and I'm the Executive Director for the Northwest Region of Canaan Companions. And before I do my introduction, we have a special treat today, and that is Victor is going to come up and sing the Star Spangled Banner. So Victor, come on up. So proudly we hail as the twilight's burst streaming through bright skies and bright stars through the perilous far or the land. So gatherly streaming, and the rocket's burst flares, the bombs burst in air, came through to the night that our flag was still there. Wow, thank you so much, Victor. That was really amazing. Thank you for doing that. Well, good afternoon. Sorry, I'm just adjusting the mic here a little bit. It's my pleasure to welcome you to today's graduation ceremony for our three newest teams of our pilot program for veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. For those of you who are new to Canine Companions, 
Our mission is to breed, raise, train, and place highly trained assistance dogs to people with disabilities completely free of charge, and that includes the follow-up for the lifetime of the placement. And this includes, yes, today we celebrate three new graduates who will receive expertly trained dogs to give them greater independence and to change their lives. Someone once said, a dog can't change the world, but can change your world. Over the past two weeks, our three new graduate teams, Alex, Ron, and Victor, worked hard to prepare for this possibility of change. They completed lectures, homework assignments, field trips, practice sessions, and evaluations. Their assistance dogs will make it easier for them to go out into public, retrieve their medication, will interrupt their anxiety, interrupt their nightmares, and will make it easier for them to live a greater life of independence. We are so excited to celebrate today your new world that you will experience with your dogs by your side. And I also want to take a moment to thank you all for your service to our country. We are truly <laughs> appreciative. I also want to say congratulations and thank you to the puppy raisers of these three amazing dogs. Sleepless nights, puppy reports, puppy classes, um, all of the things that go along with getting an eight-week dog an eight-week-old dog and raising that dog for 18 months. There were a lot of don'ts, yes, good girl, and all of those sorts of things, let's goes. Um, and today, they let go of the companion they raised for 18 months and say hello to members of a brand new part of their family. Before we get started, I'd like to say thank you to a few more groups of people. This includes our National Board of Directors, our Northwest Regional Board of Directors, our breeder caretakers, our other puppy raisers who are raising um, other puppies right now, our volunteers, our staff, and of course our donors who without their financial support, none of this would be possible. So thank you to everybody that makes this happen. It takes the whole family in order to get to where we are today. So thank you. <laughs> and now I would like to also say thank you to Eli, who is here from the Southwest region today. And he's going to come up and do a welcome. We're going to be watching a slideshow, and you guys will get to see a little bit about what these teams are going to have to go through after the race. It's it's a challenge team training, and these guys really – sorry. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, they really stepped up to it every single day, just coming in, just ready to go no matter what we threw at them. And then today we had our final ABI test, and you could just see, like, how these teams are going to go. So let's watch a little – slideshow, and then I'm going to introduce your new graduating teams.
You guys hear me? Is that better? So I strategically placed myself at an angle in which I could not see that <laughs> so that we can continue on. All right. Teams, you ready? Good. <laughs> okay. I would like to invite Alex to center stage, please. Alex has been placed with service dog Eliana, a yellow, actually red, Labrador <laughs> retriever. Last week during our safety and public etiquette lecture, we discussed how to handle public interactions and what to do when approached by strangers while out shopping or running errands. In response to our friendly warning, Alex's wife, Stephanie, joked, most people are intimidated by Alex. After spending two weeks with Alex and Eliana, I can tell you Alex is anything but. Alex has no problem rewarding Eliana with sincere, gentle, playful praise. And if you listen carefully, you may even hear him kneeling on the floor, sweetie, <laughs> giving these little pep talks. So as Wolf explained, these dogs are like the base model of a new car and it is up to you, up to the teams to customize. Like Alex's lifted truck, Eliana will be souped up to cue into his stressors and make family outings a little more comfortable. Eliana was raised at the California Healthcare Facility in Stockton, California. Presenting Eliana today are her co-raisers, Bruce and Diane Johnson of Cold, uh, Gold River, California, and Tina Moranis, a CHCF representative. Eliana is the 14th puppy Bruce and Diane have raised, and a 40th plus plus of CHCF has raised. Congratulations to service team Alex and Eliana. I'd now like to invite Ron to center stage, please. <laughs> Ron has been placed with service dog Holiday the Fifth, a yellow Labrador retriever. Ron is a phenomenal communicator, and he illustrated this beautifully during the second week of class. On a few occasions, Ron warned us that he was tapped out for the day. However, each time he was still completely on point, taking everything in and geared up, ready to lighten the mood with a joke or pun. Ron is looking forward to using his exuberant personality and connections to spread the word about Canine Companions and our work with veterans. Ron loves to tease the rest of us about his permanent vacation, AKA retirement. So what better way to embrace his laid back lifestyle than a furry loving holiday? Presenting holiday, yeah, take that in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Presenting holiday today is her puppy raiser, Sandy Richardson and Wendy Hart of Sparks, Nevada. Holiday is the first puppy she has ra they have raised. Congratulations, service team Ron and Holiday. <laughs> I 
I would like to invite Victor to center stage, please. Victor has been placed with service dog Violet the Sixth, a yellow lab golden cross. Victor has shown up to class every day, ready to give a thousand percent, always wanting to do the right thing to ensure he and Violet's success as a team. No matter how many times we stepped in to help, Victor was always appreciative and responded with a contagious laugh and smile. Victor is looking forward to bringing Violet to work, karaoke, and church choir. And if you listen carefully, you can already hear the two of them rehearsing. <laughs> we like to emphasize that we don't place dogs based on color, breed, sex, or size. But what most people don't realize is that we do place dogs based off of litter letter. <laughs> Victor comes from a family of these, his siblings, his wife, his children, and now his dog, Violet. Presenting Violet today is her puppy raiser, Kristen Trisco of Sebastopol, California. Violet is the 12th puppy they have raised and is currently working on their 13th. Congratulations, <laughs> service team Victor and Violet. Have a little stage fright. <laughs> I'd now like to bring up our graduate speaker, Ron. Hi everyone, my name is Katie and I am a Coast Guard veteran and I also have, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I've only been with Canine Companions for a few months and I have been blown away by this organization's mission and the amazing people um, who put so much love and work and energy into the dogs and also the people who receive them. Uh, Canine Companions has been honoring veterans by placing expertly trained service dogs um, and now that program extends to veterans with PTSD. I would like to honor each of our veterans by presenting them with a challenge coin. Um, so I'd like to start with Bruce. Uh, Bruce is an Air Force veteran and, <laughs> and he was the puppy raiser for Eliana. I'd like to call it Victor. Victor is an Army veteran. And Alex. And Ron, who is also Navy, correct? Navy? Oh, no, which one? Oh, I see, I see. That makes sense. Now the only branch missing is the Marine Corps, but we won't tell them that.
Sorry about that, Katie. Now we'd like to bring up Ron, our graduate speaker. Feels like a woman. Anyway, <coughs> um, for some reason they asked me to uh, say a few words about uh, a veteran's experience with canine companions or independence. That was in the article first paragraph. <coughs> when I offered to do a little presentation, I was given a little outline of the the things that I should be brought up and not brought up. And I understood all of them except at the end it says one to one and a half minutes. And I go, <laughs> that's sure. So I'll try to keep it short. And uh, I just uh, would like to uh <coughs> let you know a little bit about what uh, we veterans deal with with PTSD. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I was exposed to the... Uh, chemical agent orange. And through the years, it has started to uh, deteriorate my body. I have multiple medical issues. And at the same time, I was uh, experienced post-traumatic stress disorder. And I, uh, the best way to handle that, of course, is to self-medicate. So I became a chronic alcoholic because of that. And uh, fortunately, uh, February the 10th, uh, was my third anniversary sober. Thank you. I entered the uh, Veterans uh, Mental Health Program in Marina, California. There's a brand new uh, VA clinic built for, for both active and retired veterans. And uh, I went to them for help. And they're very supportive. They provide all, oh, am I boring you? <laughs> they, uh, they provide all the, you know, the needs of a veteran, but uh, at some point in time, uh, you, they can only have so many psychiatrists. I already take 27 pills a day for my mental health issues and my physical issues. And I still needed a little more help. And no more pills, no more psychiatrists. So I started thinking about the opportunities of having a, a canine companion. I did not know about the program at the time. I just was in our community. I let people know that I was uh, wanting to reach out and find something available. Uh, kind of ironic how I found out about canine companions. A good friend of mine, I'll just call him Steve because I don't want to embarrass him. Uh, was associated with the local chapter and I was, we both go to the same gym and I was finishing up my workout for the day and I'm just taking my shower and I'm in the gym. And uh, he, Steve walks up to me and we started chatting and I'm going, Steve, my eyes are up here. But uh, <laughs> he told me about Canine Companions and the fact that they were uh, doing a pilot program for veterans with PTSD and uh, I took the initiative to reach out to Canine Companions, finding out how uh, organized they were and what the process was to uh, become eligible to take classes and it's really not that easy, uh, but it's worth it, it really is worth it. And I found out a lot about Canine Companions and how they do the things they do and I, I must say the people in this room that are, have benefited or provided for this program is very important. But the, I, what I think the most important and the ones that don't get the most recognition is that don't get the puppy raisers. Because they take them from babies and then they give them to me and say, you raise them. So uh, just a special appreciation for the, uh, the ones that start the program. And then also to the 
the trainers. Uh, I'd like to give a special shout out to uh, Wolfie here because I was just looking in the mirror just before I came here and I have three more gray hairs. Thanks. <laughs> and I promised I wouldn't make fun of her, so sorry. Canine Companions in my community is not very well known. And um, when I get home, I can almost guarantee you that the veterans community in Marina, where it's uh, right next to the closed port orchard, there's a lot of disabled veterans and retirees there. And a lot of times people like me, the PTSD, uh, we feel like just leave me alone, I'm fine. I don't need any help. And it takes another veteran to just chat with them and convince them, you know, look what I've got, well, look what I've done, and it's a possibility. So promoting uh, canine companions is important, and being an ambassador, I look forward to doing. And also, too, uh, it's not free, you know. All of this is free, but it's not free. Canine companions being a nonprofit relies on the private community Less than 1% of their income comes from uh, federal government. The rest is people like you and like me that give and give back. And I don't look at it as, you know, just uh, giving people money to do something. I feel like it's an investment in the future. And if you want to see what happens to that investment in the future, I'm standing right here. <laughs> Okay, you can sit down now. But um, <laughs> the other uh, person I'd like to identify is uh, my wife. Uh, she has been my puppy for the last few years because when I have those emotional, sis when I'm sitting quiet and I start thinking too much and I start uh, wondering why, she's been my puppy. So I'd like to recognize the one over here with the red eyes. Uh, my wife of, believe it or not, 49 years will be our 50th in November. <laughs> I guess in, uh, is that time up yet? No, I got plenty of time. In, <coughs> in closing, it's uh, been a wonderful time. Uh, Everyone in this room is an important asset to this organization. Whether it's a um, guy back there with the yellow house that's my 80 inch TV is going to be delivered tomorrow, <laughs> even though I'm going home today. And uh, just remember that uh, Canine Companions for Independence. <laughs> oh, my glass. Yeah. Uh, continues to need your support, whether in prayer, whether in support, whether financially, whether it's volunteer. While we were here, there were so many people walking around with dogs. And I said, Billy, you got a big staff? And they said, no, they're all volunteers. So it starts with our puppy raisers and on and goes into our volunteers. And they're all worthy, even the, these two guys, the ABC guys, they they were like drill sergeants, and I felt like I was in boot camp, but <laughs> no offense. No, they're very kind, and they're supportive. I do have some issues with uh, maintaining my uh, herd, but uh, I'll be okay. They all contribute, and they all love what they're doing because they sure don't get paid enough. So, well, that's what the issue told me. But <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Ooh, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, probably unemployment pays more, huh? <laughs> well, anyway, uh, remember Canine Companion. Remember uh, the uh, successes of the program, uh, even for a guy like me that uh, I don't know whether I deserve it or not, but um, I've got what I need now. And from now on, um, what's up? <laughs> she is part of our family. She will go everywhere with us. 
I know she's a work dog, but she's also our pet. So we welcome, talk about me. We, w we welcome our new member of the family. We thank our, uh, the ones that uh, provided the, the dog for us, uh, starting with Sandy and going through the whole organization. No one person can do what Canine Companions does. If one person left this room, there would be a void and that void would have to be filled at some time because it takes all of us, even us that have been graduated, to continue to understand and respect and visualize actually what canine companions can provide, especially for Reed, disabled veterans who are suffering from things that we cannot see, but we do understand. Thank you. He wanted to know if we wanted an encore, like at a concert. It's like, you know, when you're at a concert and you clap for a long time and they come back. Thank you very much, Ron, for sharing. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you to all of those who joined us through live stream today. Uh, we really appreciate you tuning in and hope you enjoyed the graduation ceremony. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and signal off to you on the live stream. And then for everyone here, um, who uh, is in the room, we have one more last surprise um, for you, and that is Victor.